Hi, good evening everybody. Uh, let me start with my usual um, slide first of my belief that there was one human language and it is my past, you know, uh, 30 something years of traveling and 20 years in concentration in trying to find the core that we share as a human. And I believe that all languages are related and no language is isolated. And then we all speak part of the original language. And here is the uh, image of a basket starfish that uh, we share a core, all the branches are coming out. So we can no longer view the world with the hierarchical view. And I also presenting the uh, image in uh, the, my theory uh, as a, a basket starfish seeing that uh, from a female point of view, okay? from Asia of course and thank you very much good evening uh, tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how the bass actually you will see that a lot of the K and G sound is involved again but then uh, it's really amazing that the more I research into it the more I found out that a lot of the things actually originated from a very very core a lot of the things uh, spiritually they believe that is the essence and then from that essence become the growth the growth become uh, the, 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 the grass itself the growing tip of the grass and then it actually become uh, all the products that made from grass uh, the base of us and then you will see it as I go on okay and now uh, let me begin with my slide okay give me one second Okay, uh, I want to uh, again adjust to the accepted uh, thinking and because I believe there is a shared verbal language before writing and then uh, because the proof is the use of the same sound to express a lot of similar meanings and I think too much attention uh, has been paid to grammars and words are also built from the foundation as you can see I'm going to start with uh, our base really physically base and as you know this is a stool right this is the ancient Sumerian um, uh, the word uh, meaning any object made from wood and tools and this is the Chinese we say K or K as you can see it's all either G or K sound okay and for us it's really the foundation in Chinese is the foundation or actually this uh, footstool itself and then this is Sanskrit the ga sound and ga sound of course you know uh, for them you know either than the stool it actually is a very important component of their word for the village or the house itself as you can imagine you know the houses in the tropic are always elevated and they are really sitting on the base like a stool itself and then uh, from the Chinese we have the same word ga as time went by uh, the uh, image changes the Chinese use ga to mean the home as well this is home and this is home both similarly sound and then uh, I, I show you this ja right here uh, to show you how Mandarin mutates uh, ga is a Cantonese sound very ancient Chinese dialect and Jia is the Mandarin that uh, most of the scholars use as a base now uh, my research is based on Cantonese the, the ancient dialect okay and Greek of course we use this and of course you know it's pi the podium if you look at this I don't have to explain to you but then you have to know the Greek didn't use it directly as the the, the ga or the ke sound but they still have a tons of k sound this is the lake itself scalos and this is the calf itself you see the k and then um the other two actually i divided into two the the two above actually something concerned with the lake and the calf of the lake and then the underneath one is actually a three-legged base as you can see um, the, the, the base uh, word is already formed also at that time and then from Greek, you have the proto linear, uh, proto Greek linear A or uh, B, and then this is a K. As you can see, is it 
it actually drew out the base very very clearly and then of course sometimes you know you can have a three-legged base as well you can use it as a stool as well and this is actually an Egyptian uh, artifact and then uh, the Tibetan also have a similar symbol the car sound um, and then this syllable itself is also used to mean the food and also any word to do with the root and the base so as you can see all this similar symbol uh, carrying the same sound having the same conceptual meaning uh, in different areas and in Chinese of course we have another word later on and this is a person sitting on a bench or, or, or a stool itself it sounds as gay or goi and for us it actually means the home or the dwelling of, of us of, of ourselves and then uh, the mutation here is also ju and as you can see this is a mutation uh, between Cantonese and Mandarin and um, if you don't believe these are uh, symbols but I will show you a real pictograph in the ancient Egyptian this is a letter G okay can you see that it's also a stool and then of course you know from Latin you have the casa which is the house or castrum which is a castle so still stayed very clearly in the um, English language and then of course this is just a later stage of development why do I say that because uh, um, long before we start to elevate ourselves on a stool we definitely has to start from the ground itself and um, in an earlier stage for the K and G sound, as I said, is from that little grass itself. And that little grass, you know, actually uh, moved on to become uh, the, this is Sumerian, uh, kit or kita, actually means the mat itself, you know, depending on where you live, you know, either the, uh, what's underneath you is very, very important. If you have watched the program that I uh, try to introduce my idea, you will see that how important the base is for human being. I uh, show you a picture that I took in the uh, in, in the Yemeni desert and then uh, it show you that uh, without a mat without anything on the ground we actually have no way to sit on the boiling hot or, or freezing cold ground so having this technology is very important for human being to move forward so before we chip the um, stone tool we do have to manage to uh, manipulate this skill of uh, weaving the mat so uh, this is a very important skill and then of course you know staying on the ground this garlic is in Persian a carpet and kilim is the Turkish wood for a rug and then of course you have the English word carpet you say this car key ga, or the same sound okay and then uh, after we uh, begin to uh, weave our mat of course a little bit of curve will become uh, our basket and you can see very clearly the from Assyrian and this is one of the earliest cuneiform but actually you can still roughly see the pictorial form right there the K and the key actually for them means uh, a location uh, at the location of course you know where you sit you know this is the hieroglyph K very clearly the basket this is the Chinese K or K and this is actually a basket we understand it well and uh, later on the basket actually have the base that you saw a while ago Go. for us this become the foundation word you know it pronounces gay as k or gay as well and very interesting the uh, Sumerian actually have a symbol like this actually reverted back to basket this actually means basket but the sound is actually um, uh, went another direction uh, which also linked to all other languages I will not confuse you right here but you just need to look at this similar shapes and then um, this linear B this is a car look at the similarity and then this is very precisely a basket with a handle just like this here and it's a syllable called K key okay and then this is the K which you have seen already like the base and you can see uh, from the linear B which is in uh, where the Greeks are now so later on the Greek actually inherited all this you know kata is uh, the word for underneath beneath okay and then uh, kanyo is a, a basket and then kalathi or kalathi is also a uh, uh, basket you see all this ka 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 and then uh, on the other way it shows the other way Sanskrit the kata this is exactly the same sound okay in Sanskrit kata definitely just means mat 
clearly it means the floor mat itself and candala is the basket still you know you see the same system of course in cane and basket even later on as the case casket or this english word all belong to the same development of this technique when you weave them into uh, containers and then um now i show you the basis in different contexts um yeah this is uh ancient sumerian goddess sitting on her throne and this is a chinese emperor on her on his throne and this is the gay that we have and of course you know this is too simple to to show it is the emperor that's why we have another more complicated form pronounced exactly as the gay as the throne of the emperor and uh, as you can see the japanese the, the the aztec the mayan they were all sitting on the mat but these words to consider as the throne and then if you go back to the mediterranean area this is the cycletic islands of the greek and then uh, you can see very clearly that um this is the, the sign that they use but of course it took up the p sound you know and of course it also uh, developed in another direction but this is the sanskrit ga and uh, i follow in order to understand the use of languages i follow um, orthodox for a few years you know i've been in uh, the church all the time and then this is a very typical thing of the bishop standing on a little carpet right there it's very interesting this little mark right there marks his special position and no one will be able to stand on that little carpet you know when the bishop moved around inside the church this carpet will be held will be held by will be held by someone and taken along wherever he stands they will put down the carpet and showing the throne of the bishop itself and then I will show you this Greek word called cart cart is actually means to sit or the seat itself and then um, this uh, alphabet itself in ancient time is mixed with two alphabet either the th sound or the k sound and then um, it actually links back to the Egyptian k sound as you see this is really if it's uh, weaved by uh, the reed itself is like a basket and you look at it the cat itself is a seat whose seat is that but the god but the goddess or the gods okay and then of course from the cut in greek you uh, extend it to the latin cathedra cathedra means the seat the seat of who the seat of uh, the bishop and which became the english word cathedral which is definitely the seat and then i want you to uh, think that the modern education trains us to look for microscopic differences actually we have a lot of things in common but then we actually train ourselves to look at differences and then a lot of the time we uh, in the name of science you you know we, we we actually gave up a lot of our ancient tradition uh, the modern Western value uh, has been uh, taking up all the spaces and then now I want to show you some example how we were trained as a child I'm sure a lot of you had undergone this thing the more uh, ability you think you have to, is to spot differences look at this too the differences on the color of the eye and then what is the differences of this honestly I cannot see any differences but according to the YouTube that I saw they said there's this one more black hair right there okay if you if we train ourselves into something like this I really have nothing to say look at this they said also it's different because one is more gray the other one is more blue uh, accordingly I am not intelligent at all because I really can see any difference and and also this you know this according to them is different because one is eye is big the other one is smaller so uh, so according to this kind of theory definitely uh, maybe I am not human being because being born a Chinese my eyes are definitely much smaller so uh, if we train ourselves to spot differences like this there's a lot of danger uh, you know hanging around and this is one of the tests that they give you to spot the differences can you see this tiny little differences right there I think intelligence actually is to acknowledging differences, not picking out differences. And then uh, what's the, all these circles doing? They are all separated circles, right? And I think, you know, the more we want to uh, uh, stress this purity, we begin to look at purity of bloodline and then it becomes a base of racism. And also, uh, I think it actually we are really brooding atrocity right in front of us. And why don't we look at this difference, you know, 
and make use of it and appreciate the differences because you know if we only have circles you cannot do anything but if you have this little brick right here you can actually use it to link up all the other circles to make a strong strong chain metaphorically of course you know but in reality truly and if we are doing this in our education system, keep pointing to the narrow differences, where the more we look at this one little thing, we think we know all the world around us, this is very dangerous. I think uh, it is better for us to look at a wider angle, look at all the culture dif cultural differences, and as long as we know this, we actually begin to realize that behind our back, we cannot see. So uh, actually, the wider we look at, the more we know that we do not understand what's behind us. The more we focus into one little thing, the more these people will think that they know everything from that one little angle. Okay? And so uh, I want to show you also, you know, in ancient time, how do people express the, the, uh, the view of uh, 360 degrees? Uh, now science actually means the death of imagination. Whenever you bring up religion of spiritual beliefs, you know, people will just shut you down. But how would people uh, imagine their God is? Because we only have two pair of eyes facing the front. So I think the people imagine how their God is to be just. Uh, uh, that's why they create God's image, whatever religion they are. They create. They imagine that they have actually forehead. In comic, you can write it. You can paint it draw it like this and in Buddhism they have it like this in Hinduism they have it like this of course they have got names for this God and bah, uh, Brahman or Bhagavan and then um, it's actually become like schizophrenic and nowadays you know because the Western dominated uh, education system whenever you talk about the Eastern religion they will keep saying telling you that you are superstitious but then if you really look at the West you know they do have the same uh, kind of sculptures and beliefs, you know. But then for them, whenever they see this, they will begin to preserve it. They will begin to tell you that, oh, because it is uh, ancient tradition. Why are they different? They are actually the same thing, you know, how they express the, their point of being uh, having a God that is fair, that look at as is able to see the four different directions. And I show you this word in Polish, Bhagwan, and you see Bhagwan. Can you see even the reading is the same? But then now, because the Western education system dominates, this word in the West actually means idol, and actually means snowman, while this in the East still means the God and deity itself. And then um, you don't think that uh, the West holds this? I will show you another me image of the uh, cherubim. The cherubim actually was mentioned in the Jewish Bible and then later on uh, manifested in the orthodox, you know, Christian view. But of course, in the more modern uh, Christian view, uh, this this uh, image is completely gone, you know. And, and in the ancient keeps uh, expressing the uh, image of God, the ability of seeing all angles. And this is uh, the ancient Sumerian. This is actually a female God, you know, not a male. And then uh, the Hindu has the, a male four-headed God. And Ezekiel in the Bible, in this, they have uh, this description. And then uh, they will have this description of full of eyes. Why full of eyes? Because we keep hoping that uh, in the unfair world, we want someone to have this eye to see all the possibilities and then uh, the description of this cherub has four faces and then um, at the beginning it was four equal faces but in this stage of the Christianity they I mean in in, in Hebrew it will begin have the face of a cherub which means you know uh, gradually they are hiding the face of an ox okay an ox a man a lion an eagle and of course it actually uh, inherited in the Christian view you know become the four evangelist and then um, now um, I want to see 
you to look at the word cherub. And if your world's cherub is only a light color, blonde hair, little chubby little baby, then you are ignoring all human contribution in our struggle for fairness and also a fair judgment. Because, you know, cherub is actually not the correct pronunciation. If, if you follow the uh, Hebrew Bible, it will be something like croup itself. So why are you pronouncing it like cherub? And so this shows you that uh, can we really trust in modern writing? I think uh, we always have to be a little bit skeptical and a little bit a little bit critical on our writing system because writing system have many many flaws and we keep reading flaws into it. And then uh, we should always step back a little bit. We should not, if you are holding a stronger position, you should not be man not monopolizing the interpretation of everything in this world. Because all we see now is a contribution of every single human race on earth in the past thousands and thousands of years. And I will should give you an example how writing confuses. And recently, this is a very talked about uh, um, a topic. And one is, uh, I show you this view from a TV from the CBSN, and one is in America, this is the, the, the reporter in America. This is another reporter in Istanbul, uh, and the writing itself is like this. But if you are blind, you do not see this writing. You will hear the, the reporter in Istanbul uh, pronounce it, it as Hasoji, okay? And then in America, the uh, reporter will be skip saying Kasogi. So why is it the two can never agree with each other? Well, because the reporter in Istanbul, uh, the, he she cannot uh, hold this pronunciation because if he if she keep talking to people with this pronunciation Kasogi, no one will in Turkey will understand what she's talking about, and and but. The power lies on the uh, reporter in America. He, she, I mean, they should have uh, the ability to understand, you know, how it should be pronounced. This is the correct writing of the person itself, uh, Jamel uh, Kasoji. So um, the writing is right there, and but then because they want to uh, follow the tradition right here, there's nothing wrong with it. But I am just showing you, you know, how writing confuses, even at the same same time the two people are pronouncing it differently. So because of uh, talking about the news uh, based on the word name car and the base, I want to show you the origin of the word caravan. Okay, this is hieroglyph car itself, the basket, and the Chinese actually have a writing like this means moving house. Look at the hand moving that basket. And then in Hebrew, there's a car right there. The car is an actually an enclosed writing space erected on a camel saddle. What are these people doing but moving from one place to another, okay? And actually, this is really the, the, the root of the what you call caravan now. Okay, of course, you know, people are in different terrain, right, in, uh, move in different way. Of course, the base also moved to uh, will uh, uh, mutate into the word card and then uh, the basket will be in different form and can you see this little child is also sitting inside the basket um, and I want you to see the human uh, history of migration from this car right there in the ancient uh, the car actually already in the ancient Bible and then um, in another terrain uh, if you use an elephant it will be like this and then if you you use another animal and human it will also become like this this is also a basket because it's also a weaved thing and then um, the Hebrew car and you can also look at the word carrier itself and I want to show you a very interesting Chinese writing we have the word pronunciation of kill Look at this, look at this. It is like a little thing that mounted on top. For us, it retains the meaning of high above, sitting high above. What is sitting high above? But when you are sitting on a high, whatever this animal or the or, or a cart is, okay? And this word actually uh, mutates into a number of words. When we say kill or kill, and which means sitting high or tall, and gradually it becomes a sedan chair. And then the other word is kill. K 
kill actually means that you're lodging in a foreign place and it actually really means an immigrant. The Chinese, uh, the Cantonese still call these people who are living in another country a uh, kill, okay? Because they are sitting on this uh, elevated uh, mount like this to move from one place to another. And if you are Chinese, I'll show you all this expedition. Uh, using this word will already appear in literature in the first century and the fifth century. Okay, the caravan. Okay, um, uh, if you search for the root of the caravan, you know, you will only find the Persian root, the Kavan, the which is, they said, the word of caravan. But I will chase it back all the way to, again, to the basket itself from Assyrian, the hieroglyph, the Chinese ka or ge, and then the Hebrew ka, and which... Uh, actually become like this. Can you see? It is really the basket that is actually movable, mobile basket that move from one place to another. Of course, this enclosed space, you know, is no longer like that. This enclosed become uh, a car itself. The animal itself become an automation and this is what you move from one place to another and because of the caravan is so famous now I want you to see the other way of understanding caravan and of course you know uh, all this argument about the caravan people have been doing it for from for thousands and thousands of years it is just because a universal desire for a better life nothing but nothing different, uh, uh, nothing differentiate us from the other. So I uh, stop putting a lot of those um, reasons for for people why they uh, move from one place to another. They are just doing what they can do for their children. So uh, in searching for this, you know, I look at the word altruism, but I think um, time is running. Uh, short I think I will just end it right here uh, in case it's just too much I will talk about the word altruism because it has a lot to do with the bull itself too I hope I haven't jammed too much into your brain this time and uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope you understand what I'm trying to get through to you thanks a lot and have a nice evening okay bye